Welcome into another bonus episode here on Hockey Inside Out. The hard-hitting questions continue for the Montreal Canadiens. Could this team next spring be in that playoff conversation, yes or no? Let me lay out the perfect ideal dream scenario for the Montreal Canadiens. Sam Montembeau repeats what he did this season, right? He establishes himself as a 1A goaltender, a guy who can play 50 games at that level. The Canadians get lucky in the draft lottery. They take Connor Bedard. They still manage to somehow trade for or get uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois. So down the middle, they're insanely deep. Caden Gooley and the rest of the young rookies, they all miraculously develop in the proper way next season. Is that a playoff team? It might be. But other than that, uh, I think it's it's way too much to expect. If, if everything possible worked out for the Montreal Canadiens and they got everything they possibly wanted, then I think they push into a wild card spot. But other than that, the team is, is just not ready. There's too many contracts that still need to be moved out, too many young players that still need to be developed for this team to be considered uh, a playoff team. Yeah, like Andrew says, it's going to be close, but uh, I don't know whether they're going to make the cut. But, I mean, look, at if we look back at uh, almost the halfway point of the season, they were teasing us, knocking on the door with actual uh, points to get in the playoffs, and they were playing as well with everybody healthy as anybody could imagine. And they were hitting on all cylinders to the point where I think everybody was going, whoa, what do we got here? And then, you know, obviously the injuries came in and the reality set in. But it uh, it's exciting to think about, you know, the opportunity for these guys to be better next year with their full roster, if you will. And, uh, you know, making a couple changes here and, uh, you know, draft-wise and moving a few pieces around. Um, Going to be close, but I, I don't know whether they'll uh, – They'll, they'll advance to that uh, that wild card uh, playoff spot, but going the right way. Um, now it's it's up to them to uh, to prove everybody wrong that uh, proved or they commented. They said last year they said, "Oh boy, the def- defense was going to be horrendous. Too many rookies," and they uh, they rallied to uh, prove a lot of people wrong. So a- anything is possible. They might come up a little bit short. Yeah, last year at this time, I don't know how many people thought the New Jersey Devils would have the season they have had this season. But having said that, they're a year or two ahead of the Canadians as far as their rebuilding process uh, goes, as far as stockpiling draft picks and that. Um, As you mentioned, Andrew, if everything goes perfectly and they get Connor Bedard, yeah, there's a chance they get in the playoffs. But this is a team that's going to finish the season 27th or 28th in the standings. They're also around 26, 27, 28 in offense and in defense. Uh, so, you know, they need to score more goals. They need to prevent more goals. They need to improve a lot of stuff. So I don't see them being in the playoffs next year. But uh, if they can continue to develop like they did this year, uh, you know, two games left in the season, they're already 13 points ahead of where they were last season. That's an impressive performance with all the injuries they've had. Uh, but it's going to be uh, baby steps for the Canadians, I think, moving forward. Um, can they hang around in a playoff spot or playoff contention maybe a little longer next season? If everybody stays healthy, yeah, maybe around game 55, 60. They're still sort of there. Uh, but I just think there's too many areas that they need to improve in, and it's going to take some time to do that. I think, uh, as Kent Hughes said in a recent podcast, you know, he, he thinks they're probably about three years away from being that competitive team in the playoffs every year with a chance to win. And I think that's a realistic uh, time frame. But as you said, you know, if they get uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois and they win the draft lottery and they get Connor Bedard and Sam Montebo stands on his head through a season and everybody improves, there's a, a possibility. But I wouldn't. Uh, in the NHL, wants all of us to gamble and bet now. That's their big thing. But, uh, I wouldn't bet on the Canadians getting in the playoffs next season. I'll put that in my parlay. That with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but, but look, guys, in hindsight, though, you look at this season, the Habs weren't officially eliminated until, I think, what, game 72, 73? So yeah. I, I think that that's progress, right, guys? So if you look at next year, maybe – you're right, Rick. Maybe there's still not that competition for that wild card spot and kind of wane by the wayside in terms of where they want to be by game number 80. But maybe if they're healthy, they can be much more competitive. And we saw a glimpse of it for about the first 40 games or so until it started to fall off uh, from that point onwards. I mean, look at they were they were playing really well. I was I was so impressed with their overall game to uh, you know to be excited about what was happening there. And um, 
that's that's a good thing. Um, and you know, you like to uh, analyze their their team game. Maybe not so much the wins and losses, which uh, you know will depend on goaltending. Will depend on certain individuals making the difference. But uh, they they've got more of an upside than a downside as far as you know um, uh, moving in the right direction. So it's it's going to be exciting to see. And I guess we have to use that word patience once again. Well, one of the hundred percent. One of the big things about this season is that this was a fun team to watch, right up until the last few games. I mean, when you know they basically <laughs> the Laval Rocket on the ice with a couple of NHL players uh, thrown in. But you know, you mentioned I mean, there's a difference between being mathematically eliminated from the playoffs and being eliminated from the playoffs. I mean, they were you know game forty five or whatever. We knew the Canes weren't going to be in the playoffs. It was game seventy or whatever before they were mathematically eliminated. But it's a team that the, the, I think one of the biggest takeaways from this season. Is that they've shown that there's a Marty Sandler keeps talking about the culture he wants to build. These are guys who want to want to. They like each other. They want to play together. They don't give up together. Near the end of the season, they started to a little bit, but it's understandable. It's human nature. They're so banged up. I got 12 guys watching in the press box. They can see the finish line. Summer's coming. You don't want to end up like Alex Belzil with a cast on your leg for the first two months of your your summer vacation. But it's the team that showed this season with Marty Sandler. They like playing for him and they never give up. Uh, so if they keep that going forward next season, I don't see any reason why they won't. Uh, they'll be competitive, but I just don't think they're ready to get into the playoffs. So over under on shot blocks the last two games, oh, yeah. whole team combined, guys, 25? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean that was is on that. a lot of guys were looking at him and going, oh, man, that's <laughs> what a way to end your season. Alex Bozo, what a great story, storybook season, right? Called up, first real stint in the NHL at age 31, does everything he can, blocks a shot and breaks his leg. <laughs> <laughs> look off there I'll look at the parlays for block shots and all that for next year guys and we'll, we'll make our bets and have money in our coffers by the time we hit the next spring talk about the playoffs moving forward don't forget to make is game. gambling night in Canada now right yeah. <laughs> for sure no question about that don't forget to submit your questions and comments here on Hockey Inside Out we look forward to conversing about that in a future episode I check out the YouTube page for Hockey Inside Out and for the newsletter head on by the MontrealGazette.com slash newsletters and, of course, for full episode and bonus content, head on by Hockey Inside Out. On behalf of Andrew, Stu, and Rick, wish you a great week. We'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>